Poster number 19, The Impact of Bariatric Surgery on Polycystic Ovary Syndrome, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis, being presented by Noah Schweitzer. All right, we're almost there, guys. <laughs> Two more. So uh, I'd first like to thank Stages for giving me this opportunity. We're all pretty excited about our research. Um, so today, we're going to present the impact of bariatric surgery on polycystic ovary syndrome, a systematic review and meta-analysis. And we have nothing to declare. So currently, we're Canadian. In Canada, the indications for bariatric surgery are a BMI above 40 or a BMI above 35 with severe com comorbidities. And one of them generally is not PCOS. And if you guys uh, remember, PCOS is defined by two of three in the Rotterdam criteria of oligo or an ovulation, hyperandrogenism, and polycystic ovaries. Um, and there's this complex relationship between obesity, the metabolic syndrome, and PCOS. And it's not well elicited yet, um, but uh, it's definitely multifactorial. And right now, the primary treatment modality for PCOS is lifestyle changes, so exercise and weight loss and diet regimens. Um, so we want to see, is there a role for bariatric surgery? So we wanted to systematically review the literature to see um, the efficacy of bariatric surgery on uh, the treatment mo modality of PCOS. So what do we do? So we, uh, we searched all electronic databases, including Embase, Scopus, Medline, and uh, we screened 311 papers by title and by abstract, and we included 13 um, papers, which we thought were um, relevant to our study. Unfortunately, they were all case series. None of them were randomized controlled trials, and we'll get to the significance of that after. Um, so it's pretty interesting results we found. So uh, the prevalence of PCOS in these papers on average is 45% pre-op, and that significantly decreased about 7%. Um, and then that was maintained long-term at this, the study follow-up end. Um, and all the clinical phenotypes of PCOS were also significantly decreased. Uh, so menstrual irregularity, hirsutism, and infertility. Um, unfortunately, infertility, there was only one study that talked about it, and that's one of our limitations that, as we know, in a systematic review, you're only as good as your primary studies. So unfortunately, there was marked heterogeneity amongst our studies. Uh, so that kind of limits the conclusions that we can make. Um, so in conclusion, we think that it appears that bariatric surgery is an effective uh, treatment modality. It's not a cure, and I think, I think that's the emphasis that we have to make. It doesn't cure uh, polycystic ovaries, uh, ovary syndrome, but its phenotypes definitely improves. <coughs> and one of, the, one of the interesting things and the exciting things is maybe this is a new indication for bariatric surgery. It can be one of the severe comorbidities. All right, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Again, I encourage you, you did so much work with this meta-analysis, please publish this because you're right, it's very frustrating to have somebody who's a BMI 39.8 and the yeah. insurance doesn't cover it because they don't recognize polycystic ovary or reflux or anything other than sleep apnea um, and uh, diabetes and really some hypertension as, as comorbid conditions. So please, yeah, too, much, too much work not to publish it. Especially, I was just going to say, especially the infertility one for reproductive women is a big deal. So, I mean, maybe they're BMI of 39, but maybe they want to have a child. So, yeah. it's, uh, if that can improve infertility, it's important. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Very good. Thank you.